Hello everyone and welcome to another Steam Next Fest video. I'm here today to talk about the precinct, but in all honesty, I didn't want to be. I actually wanted to be playing the game and commenting on it in the normal way that I do. However, my microphone had other ideas. So seeing as only Alvin and the Chipmunks would be able to understand me, I am hereby forced to do a video such as this where I talk you through the elements of the game and give you my feedback as a commentary rather than a live gameplay reaction. So this is a game that I have been keeping my eye on now for some time and I've been eagerly anticipating an opportunity to get my hands on it. So to say that I was excited at finally getting to play this was somewhat of an understatement and I'm happy to say that for the most part it really did live up to my expectations. Allow me first to set the scene. We are in Averno City in 1983. Gangs rule the streets and we are the new kid on the block, fresh out of the academy and we are thrust straight onto the beat to learn how real police work goes down. We meet our fellow police officers who learn that we are in fact the son of the former police chief who was killed. What? No way. We are then straight into a cop car and getting to hear the lowdown from Sergeant Kelly, who is the stereotypical cop who sort of sounds like he's been doing it too long and just wants an easy life getting by, doing the bare minimum required. He becomes our guide and tutorial as we learn to not only drive cars and helicopters, but to go around and ensure that even minor crimes such as parking fines and graffiti are properly dealt with. The game has an impressive level of depth to the crimes that we are being tasked with solving. Each crime in the long list of the ones that we will potentially see being committed has its own guide and process for how it needs to be dealt with. This includes the appropriate level of force that you can use, at which stage should we ask for ID or instigate a search, or whether or not they should be arrested or just fined. It's actually quite a strange feeling because the game has a rather nostalgic look to it, and by that I mean that it does sort of remind me of the old school GTA games. I'm talking the top-down ones from the early PlayStation days. Now clearly, this is much more modern graphics and a really cool noir style to it, but for some reason when I first started this game and I was driving around, I actually sort of felt like I should be going and finding a mission or generally just causing mayhem. Whereas in this one, of course, I'm the one keeping the peace. We embark on thrilling vehicle chases through destructible environments, attempting to stop criminals getting away using a variety of options. We can try and use our car as a battering ram to stop him, or we can call in support from our fellow officers in the form of further support vehicles, or perhaps a stinger trap. Now we only get to play around half an hour of the demo, which means that we only engage in one shootout as well as dealing with a few petty crimes, but it does feel like there is going to be plenty of variety here to keep things interesting and keep the game progressing forward. Little was divulged about the story itself during this demo, but we do know that the story centres around your father's murder in the line of duty. So you can be sure that Nick Cordell Jr. is going to be investigating and likely uncovering unsettling pieces of information that will lead to some exciting and dangerous situations. I've only got two real criticisms about my time spent with this demo, but they are both fairly minor. The first is the voice acting. It is actually quite difficult at times to tell whether it's AI or whether it's actual voice actors. When you're talking with Sergeant Kelly, for example, whilst you're out on patrol, the voice acting is fine and engaging to listen to. Took different paths when we got on the force, though. He wasn't gonna let anything get in his way. However, during the almost comic book strip style cutscenes, where there are multiple people involved in a conversation, things get a little bit more murky. I want to introduce you to our newest tender lamb fresh out of the academy. Bah. The conversations themselves seem to be quite fast paced, flicking from one character to another with very little room to allow the words of the previous character to sink in. Some of the characters' lines are a little bit on the cringy, cheesy spectrum, but that may well be a deliberate choice given the theme and time period that this game is set in. As I said, this was a very minor point. It just felt like it was all a little rushed and there wasn't a great deal of tone or emotion in a lot of what the characters were saying at times, but this is definitely a personal preference thing. You guys may well not have the same issue with this that I do. But to be clear, it's not game breaking and does not turn me off from the story itself in any way, shape or form. The second issue is with the gunfighting and we only had one real shootout in this and the aiming controls were quite clunky. There was a huge amount of aim assist going on which isn't necessarily a bad thing in a single player experience. Just think of Red Dead or GTA for that. But for me, it did take away the element of feeling like it was you doing the shooting. The aim assist was so strong, in fact, that trying to adjust your aim to try and maybe get a headshot was actually quite difficult because it felt like the game was actively fighting against you. But just like the issue I have with some of the voice acting, this is not a deal breaker and this is only based on one gunfight, which means I will likely have plenty of time to get to grips with it and it may well be something that becomes a little bit more natural as the game goes on. 
Those are literally the only two negatives. Everything else feels really good. The driving is pretty smooth. The cars have some weight to them so that when you're turning them in, they're not turning like they're on rails, but equally they don't turn like an oil tanker. There's like a nice middle ground where the cars are responsive, but still require an element of skill to stay in a pursuit of another vehicle, for example. One final comment on this game that I'd like to point out is that I really feel like this game could be a hit on the Steam Deck. I have many games that I play almost exclusively on mine because they're just so good to play on a handheld device. Marvel Midnight Suns is the standout for me when it comes to handheld gaming on my Steam Deck, and everything I've played from the precinct suggests that it would fit perfectly into a Steam Deck experience. This is of course on the assumption that the Steam Deck hardware is capable of running the game, but I would be quite surprised if it wasn't able to. The controls are not overly complicated. Most things are accessed via a radial dial menu, and with the aim assist, the shooting should not be a problem either. The only potential issue could be the size of the text. But in reality, I think that's something that they could easily sort. If the demo of this is still available by the time you watch this, I really highly recommend you give this a go. To me at least, it feels like there's a real appetite in the gaming space at the moment for rich single player experiences. The fatigue of multiplayer gaming and everything that comes with it feels like games that are in development currently that are single player, rich in storytelling with fun and enjoyable mechanics, are more popular now than they have been for a long time. Just as an example, if I had to ask you about the 10 best games in the last five years or so, I would lay good money that most people are going to have games like Elden Ring, Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, God of War, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or Red Dead 2 on their lists. That isn't to say that of course that multiplayer gaming doesn't have its place, in fact some of the games I've just mentioned even have multiplayer elements to them, but I do believe that the age of single player experiences is upon us again and developers would do well to recognise that. Whether or not the precinct adds to the list of fantastic single player experiences like those that I've just mentioned, I don't know. But based on this demo I would say it's got a great shot and hopefully we won't have long to wait. Grab your badge and pistol rookie because the precinct is currently slated to release before the end of 2024. Thank you so much for watching my brief review on the precinct demo. If you enjoyed the video drop a like, drop a comment and let me know your thoughts. Hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell for alerts on all of my future uploads and I'll see you all on the next one.